Watch the Food Channel and you think everyone's a chef. But the truth is that for every chef, there are dozens and dozens of professional line cooks toiling in relative, if not absolute, obscurity. There's only one chef in a restaurant kitchen. Now, Gita Seaton, a 30-year-old professional cook with extensive experience in Montreal restaurants, is giving these unsung line cooks a chance to shine in a series of monthly meals intended to put them in the limelight, to give them the opportunity to show what they're capable of without being under the wing of a chef. After being invited to participate in a chef appreciation event in Ottawa a few months back, Seaton got to work planning her own such event, dubbing it Cookies Unite, for cooks, not chefs, cooks. The monthly event takes place at a spot called Depanneur Le Pickup, a cool dep which serves breakfast and lunch. It's in what owner Bernadette Hood, Bernie to most, calls Milex, between Myland and Park Extension, just off Park Avenue and Sansotique. And the place actually stays open through the two seatings of Cookies Unite, the first at 7, the second at 9.30. Locals might wander in to buy beer or milk or bread, which only contributes to the cool and wonderfully unfussy vibe of the place. Intimate. Cynthia Sitaris, sous chef at Chasse Peche, was the first Cookies Unite cook. The Gazette turned up the following month at the pickup for June's dinner, created by Phil Vien, a sous chef at DNA in Old Montreal designed a beautifully homegrown menu. The first course was a divine cream of Mount Royal stinging nettle soup made with nettles Via himself had harvested from, you guessed it, Mount Royal. The soup was served adorably in teacups and saucers from a stash of plates and cups and bowls Seton has been buying up in second-hand shops. The soup was followed by my favorite course of the entire meal, an organic duck egg from the Stairs Home Farm in Hemingford, the yolk larger and firmer than hen's eggs, cooked sunny side up and served with local asparagus. The main course was roasted Quebec pork belly with its crackling and pan juices and new potatoes. There was mackerel for the non-meat eaters. Dessert was wildflower honey semifredo affogato. Affogato means drowned in Italian. Usually the dish is served with ice cream puddling in coffee but Vien created a semifredo affogato in tea, lovely red thé des bois. In the kitchen, he was ably assisted by fellow cook and close friend Aaron Langil, as they turned out dinner for 28 during the first seating and 31 the second. They did it with grace and agility and a measure of good-humored banter between them the whole time. Dinner cost $30 per person at Cookies Unite, considerably less than one would expect to pay for a comparable meal in a restaurant like, say, DNA or Chasse Pache. But the event is not for profit. The money covers the cost of the food, rent for the space, and the wait staff. That's it. Seton acts as maître d'hôtel. She welcomes diners and seats them and makes sure things are going right. Beforehand, she organizes the reservations. Chefs are booked through to next March. Places go quickly. And she designs and makes the flyers for the events. She has nothing to do with menu planning, but she makes sure the people cooking have all that they need. The servers that night were Claude Bearer and Sarah Ewald. Both women had to be up at 6 a.m., and they did it for me, Seton said. Restaurant people are like that. Diners for the 7 p.m. seating arrived promptly, some knew each other, maybe they were friends of Vien or Seton, and so one immediately felt a sense of camaraderie of community, a happy mingling of strangers and friends. To Seton, the event is all about community. She wants industry people, but she also tries to save seats for people who don't work in the restaurant business so others can have the experience, she said. If an evening is sold out, she does her best to make sure a diner will have a spot at the next one. The second seating at the Dep seemed more raucous somehow than the first. Not that the first was sedate by any measure, but there were more larger tables at the second seating, more tables of two and three at the first. People turning up for the 9.30 seating were more likely to have had a libation or two before dinner as well. Maybe they brought wine with them. A few people who'd come for the first surface hung around, mind you, sitting on benches outside the Dep and drinking out of teacups. They said, when we asked, that it was coffee they were drinking.